excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Oh, coming through. Ugh. Whoops. Um, can I speak to your manager? That would be me. What are you doing? I'm drawing my memoir. Here's me as a baby making daisy chains in the garden. Here's me as a teenager listening to rock music. And here is me as a young man fighting a jabberwock. Oh, I've heard of that one. Good. Usually nobody's heard of it. I've heard of it. So that makes two people who know of my adventures now. You and nobody. What? Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading Alice Through the Looking Glass. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Parlor was where I studied books and poems and maps. And it's where I would play chess with my two best pals, Kitty and Snowball. Yeah. Alice had just called checkmate. That means I'm about to win, Kitty. I'm very sorry, but you just aren't playing very well. Have you been practicing? Really? <laughs> Every night you practice? I don't believe you. <laughs> and Snowball, you aren't even paying attention. Meow. Oh, sure, just play with your yarn. <laughs> oh, so cute. <sighs> Why are you so naughty? I ought to toss you through the looking glass. Meow. What's a looking glass? It's a mirror, silly cat. <laughs> Alice showed her kittens the giant mirror. See, there's another world in there. I think everything is backwards over there, but nobody really knows for sure. No one has ever even gone through. Snowball bopped her ball of yarn and it went rolling through the looking glass. Snowball, go get it. Meow. You kittens are so adorable, but not very good at tricks. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to go get it myself. Whoa, cool, I'm here, <laughs> look. Snowball, kitty, I'm through the looking glass. I guess they can't hear me. I suppose I never did hear anything from the other side before. Now where's that yarn? <laughs> it's funny, I would have expected it to look the same over here, but it doesn't. Wow, this is so fun. Hey, <laughs> it's summer here. On the other side, it was winter. <gasps> There's a chessboard, just like mine. I don't are the know pieces moving? Where's my kitten? Oh, kitty, where are you? They're talking. Look, the red queen piece is yelling at the white king. <gasps> You've lost my kitten, you rat. I did no such thing. Oh, she has a kitten too. It must be the tiniest kitten. I should help. Ah, oh, giant, put, put us, us down. down. I won't hurt you. I want to help you find your kitten. But Alice didn't realize that because she was so big, her voice sounded quite scary to the little king and queen. What they heard was, I won't hurt you. Oh, that makes sense. Let go of us. Oh, okay. Ah! Geez, I was only trying to help. They didn't even say thank you. Then Alice saw a great big book. This, yabba da 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 da, huh? Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> because everything looks backwards in mirrors, I'll just hold it up to the looking glass and then I'll be able to read it. Jabberwocky, what's that? Beware the jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. I wonder what a jub jub bird looks like. <laughs> and what the heck is a bandersnatch? He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time, the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree. I bet a tum tum tree has all kinds of yummy things inside <laughs> and growls when it's hungry. Ooh, this is so exciting. The jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. Mmm, snicker-snack. <laughs> and hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kalu kalay. He chortled in his joy. Oh, frabjous day? Who says that? <laughs> um, I think that was a very good poem, <laughs> but I'm not sure I understood it. But I am positive I would not like to meet any jabberwockies. <laughs> Actually, I should definitely, probably go back to my side of the looking glass. 
No Jabberwockies there. But then again, maybe I should explore a little? It does look like a really nice day outside. Alice started for the stairs and then realized she wasn't walking, but floating down them. Whoa! <laughs> she floated down the stairs and to the door. Okay, this definitely never happened on the other side of the looking glass. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, this is kind of like Wonderland. <laughs> I just floated like a feather into this lovely, but giant flower garden. <laughs> and things that don't usually talk and walk are talking and walking. <laughs> I better not eat any weird cookies or follow any rabbits. Or pick any flowers. What? I said do not pick the flowers. Are you really a flower? Yes, I am. And I prefer not to be picked. Oh, of course. I would never. <laughs> May I ask, how did you learn to talk? How did you learn to talk? I suppose my parents taught me. <laughs> I don't really remember. I was just a baby. <laughs> Can all flowers talk? Yeah, but we usually wait until spoken to. <gasps> That's so magical. What kind of flower are you? I'm not a flower. <laughs> Your petals are so strange. This is my hair. <laughs> She has two stems. How odd. Alice didn't like being made fun of, so she changed the subject. Do any other plants talk? The tree says bow wow. That's why its branches are called boughs. Oh. You didn't know that? Stop teasing our guest. They know I can't reach them. If I could, I would bop them and pull their petals. Allow me. <laughs> if you don't be quiet, I'll pick you. Alice tried to change the subject again to something nicer than daisy pulling. How is it you can all talk so well? I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hands down and feel the ground. Then you'll know why. Okay. It's very hard, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. In most gardens, they make the flower beds too soft, so the flowers all fall asleep. Oh, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> well, you don't look very smart. I never saw a flower that looked sillier. Oh, that's so not cool. Enough! I'm sorry, they've never seen anything like you. But that's no excuse to be rude. Definitely not. So if they've never seen anything like me, does that mean I'm the only person around here? Well, there is one other thing in the garden that can move around like you. She's very red, like a rose. I think I'll go look for her. Maybe she could show me around. Good luck. Alice said goodbye and began to walk away when she heard a very strange, very tiny sound. What's that? It sounds like it's coming from below my feet. Eek! Don't you see the sign? Keep off the grass? Yeah, step off, Bigfoot. Oh, I'm sorry. Alice hopped off the grass and onto the stone path. I guess I'll have to be careful around here. Stones don't have feelings, do they? No, you're good. Okay, thanks. I'll just stick to the stones. Bye! Bow wow. Alice walked along the path, looking for the red girl that Tiger Lily had described. There she is! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Hello! Call me Your Majesty. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. Oh, you're the Red Queen, aren't you? But you were so tiny before. Don't you remember when I held you in my hand? You're talking nonsense, and you should curtsy when you see a queen. Right, um, well that was weird. Your majesty, I was wondering if you could tell me how to get up that hill? Come with me. The queen began to run and Alice followed, but soon she realized they were just running in circles. Faster, 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 faster. I'm getting dizzy. Faster, and stop. Ugh. I've never felt so dizzy and wobbly and whoa. Are you thirsty? Here, have a cookie. Alice took the cookie just to be polite, even though she knew it would only make her thirstier. Better? Mm, I'm still thirsty, but hey, we're on a hilltop. And look, the land is separated into perfect squares, <laughs> just like a chessboard. I want to play. Just move from square to square. If you get lost, ask a knight for help. And if you see the king, be sure to curtsy. I will, thanks. <laughs> and just like that, the Red Queen was gone, as if she had been picked up and placed elsewhere. 
I forgot to ask if she found her kitten. Oh well, time to go play. <laughs> Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. If this is all a big game of chess, I wonder what piece I could be. Hmm, I would like to be a queen, naturally. <laughs> Queens can move anywhere on the board and go farther than any game pieces. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to be a pawn. They can only move one step at a time. <sighs> Boring. And they can only go forward. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta go side to side. Like when you're line dancing. Or playing tennis. Hmm, I wonder why there are kings and queens in chess but no princes or princesses. Anyway, let's go see if there's anyone around who can tell me the rules of real life chess. Everything looks the same. <laughs> oh, but there's a train. Maybe that's how I get to the next square. All aboard. Wow, this is so fun. Ticket, please. I don't have a ticket. Ticket, please. I still don't have one. Just give him your ticket. Um, how about this? I got it from the Red Queen. Thank you, have a nice day. Why are you looking at me through binoculars? Is that better? Mm, I'm still confused. How about now? Have you lost your eyeglasses or something? <laughs> I never had any. I'm a butterfly. And nearly all butterflies are nearly blind. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> a butterfly with eyeglasses. Who ever heard of such a thing? But you have. Never mind. Ticket, please. But I already gave you a cookie. Ticket, please. And I told you I don't have a ticket. Well, then, you must leave the train. You want me to jump? Go ahead and jump. Use your wings. Easy for you to say, Madam Butterfly. Oh, hmm. To stop train, pull here. Okay. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. That is amazing. Oh, looks like I'm in a new chess square. Okay, where to next? Oh, <laughs> this way to the house of Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Hey, I've heard of them before. They're in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi Tweedledee. Hi Tweedledum. <laughs> If you're here for our autographs, don't bother. We don't have a pen. And we don't know how to write. Oh, well, that's all right. I just came to say hello. <laughs> I'm just wandering around this place, and you're the first people I actually know. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> From the nursery rhyme? That's all made-up pretend stuff. It's just silly. Wait, how does it go again? Allow me. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. Not true. For Tweedledum said Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. Oh, I never even had a rattle. Just then flew down a monstrous crow, ah! as black as the tar barrel. I've never even seen a crow round these parts. Which frightened both the heroes so, they quite forgot their quarrel. And we don't get frightened, because we are so very brave. Crow! Oh wait, brother, that's just a little butterfly. Phew, we're safe. <laughs> that was hilarious. Good thing you guys are so brave. So you like poems and rhymes, huh? Yes. Well, some poems. I didn't really get the one about the Jabberwocky with the Jub Jub birds and the Frabjous Joy and whatnot. <laughs> and I definitely did not like the one about the Knave of Hearts either. <laughs> long story. Oh, good idea. I'll read a long poem. Oh, I hope it's not too long. I should probably be going. Shh. Tweedledee, start the poem. Uh, 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 um. This is a really good poem, and Tweedledee is amazing at reciting poetry. What's that, Tweedledum? I said you are amazing at reciting poetry, Tweedledee. Oh, thanks, Tweedledum. No problem, Tweedledee. Action! What? Oh, oh, yes. Finally. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, Tweedledee and Tweedledum Productions present The Walrus and the Carpenter. Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Walrus and the Carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. And this was odd because it was the middle of the night. That's right, I do whatever I want. Alice, you be the moon. Okay.
Yes, it's very rude of the sun to come and spoil my fun. The sea was wet as wet can be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. Not even any scary crows. Ah! Thank goodness for that. Okay, now you guys be the walrus and the carpenter. Okay. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. If all this sand were only cleared away, it would be grand. Hello, oysters. Come and walk with us. I do beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. Four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frothy waves, all scrambling to the shore. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need. Now if you're ready, oysters dear, we begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be an awful thing to do. Oh no, I just remembered, at the end, the walrus and the carpenter eat all the oysters. <gasps> Poor little oysters. Yes, and it's especially sad because I don't think oysters are very tasty. You're spoiling my poem. Maybe we should change it to be about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now let's get back to the poem. <laughs> Whoa, this place is crazy. Oh, oysters. <gasps> I mean PB and J's. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? And their answer, there was none. And that was not odd because they'd eaten every one. The end. See, much better that we changed it to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> hey, I think it's gonna rain. Not under here. Hey, what's this? Why, it's a rattle, just like your nursery rhyme. And it's spoiled. It's just an old rattle, Tweedledum. Get over it. No, it's not old. It was brand new, Tweedledee. And you spoiled it. I thought you said that nursery rhyme about you was all made up. <laughs> prepare to battle, Tweedledee. No, you prepare to battle, Tweedledum. I think I know how this ends. Just like the nursery rhyme. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I'll just be going now. Okay. We really are brave. Right. I know. <laughs> See ya. Hey, it's the White Queen. Alice, I've been looking everywhere for you. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I've been looking everywhere for you. For me? Uh-oh. Did I do something wrong? Not yet. Huh? What will I do? I'm not yet sure, but you certainly will do something wrong at some point. Oh no, I hope not. Anyway, I needed to find you because there is a bee on my face and I can't swat it away. Alice looked and looked, but she just didn't see a bee on the White Queen's face at all. Your Majesty, there's no bee on your face. But there will be a bee, and when it is there, I will need you to swat it off. You want me to swat a bee off your face in case a bee lands on your face later? Yes, except a bee will land on my face. You can see the future? Wow, that's so cool. What's my future? Am I gonna marry a prince? Or have a high-powered job in a major law firm? Or finally learn how to play a trumpet? Aw, that's so sweet. You're a silly girl. I don't see the future. I just remember the future. How can you remember something that hasn't happened yet? In the looking glass, time doesn't work the same way. You silly folks on your side of the glass can only remember backwards. But in the looking glass, you can remember backwards and forwards. That doesn't make sense to me. We are like a swing going back and forth and up and down. But your world is like a slide. You can only remember things one way. And sure enough, while the White Queen explained this to Alice, a bee landed on her face. Your Majesty, a bee has landed on your face! Exactly as I remembered. Hold still while I swat it away. Ah! Oh, Alice, that hurts. I haven't done anything yet. But you will. You will slap me to get the bee away and it will hurt. Shame on you. <sighs> I'm just gonna go with this. Wow, rude. 
sorry. I just can't seem to figure out what is considered right and wrong here. The looking glass is a strange place. As Alice turned back around to face the White Queen, she found that the Queen was no longer a queen at all. Whoa, this place is crazy. <laughs> Your Majesty, did you turn into a sheep? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak sheep. Ba 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 ba. As Alice bawed back at the sheep, she realized that by speaking in its own language, she was able to understand what the sheep was saying. Ba. Yes, I own a shop just around the corner. Would you like to come see it? Ba. I wonder what they have here. I would love to buy an umbrella for the rain, or a crown for my head, or even a I Heart Looking Glass t-shirt. <laughs> oh, right, ba. We have lots of things for sale. Actually, it's mostly soup. Would you like soup? Ba. Goose, where are the vegetable soups? Hey, we got them in the vegetable soup aisles. Of course, where else would they be? <laughs> Maybe I just shouldn't get anything today. I don't think I even brought my purse with me into the looking glass. <laughs> oh, I know. Do you know how to get to the next row of the chessboard? Nope. <sighs> oh, I know. I can find out how to get to the next part if I climb this tree. Maybe then I'll be high enough to see where I can go next. <sighs> And so Alice hoisted herself onto the tree that housed the general store and climbed. She climbed higher and higher and higher and higher and refused to look down. It's okay, Alice. I've got this girl. Work those arms. And don't look down. As Alice looked down, she noticed something peculiar. Even though she had been climbing for many minutes, she was no further off the ground than she had been before. What? No, that can't be. And yet, the general store and the knitting sheep were gone. Instead, she was in a different place. This place is so backwards. The queen turned into a sheep, which I could only understand if I bawed. And that crab was named Goose? And I have no idea where I am. Suddenly, Alice heard a peaceful voice from overhead. I know where you are, child. Who's that? You're almost to the next square. All you have to do is pass the gate of this wall up ahead. It's guarded by all the king's horses and all the king's men know, so be polite and be careful. You're a talking egg? Yeah, on top of that, I know a lot of languages. I can speak human, I can speak egg, I can speak looking glass, I can speak nonsense. I heard a poem today that was all nonsense. I didn't understand any of it. Maybe I can help. My apologies, I never introduced myself. My name is Humpty Dumpty. Wait, you're Humpty Dumpty? As in THE Humpty Dumpty? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So, you've heard my name before. Yes, you're really famous where I'm from. And there's a song about you and everything. <laughs> that sounds nice. Can you recite it to me? Of course. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. <sighs> I would clap, but I don't have hands. That's okay. <laughs> I hope it's just a silly rhyme and not a prophecy. My wall is my happy place. It keeps my chakras aligned. You sound like you're speaking nonsense again. Like that Jabberwocky poem I read earlier. I told you I'm fluent in nonsense. I can maybe help translate it for you. Wow, this is so fun. Yay! Do you remember how the entire Jabberwock poem went? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jub Jub bird and the frimmiest bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree 
The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the Tolji wood and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the Vorpal blade went snicker snack. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kalu kalay. He chortled in his joy. What a strange poem, but it makes perfect sense to me. Which part of that did you not understand? Long time the man's own foe he sought. What does that mean? Manxum is a combo of manly and buxom. Many of the words in this poem are created by putting existing words together and making a new word out of it. That's a portmanteau. Bless you. Now burbled, that must be bleeding, murmuring, and warbling all at once. What a multitasker. Respect. And frabjous? Fabulous and joyous, like all days should be. Wow, I guess the poem makes more sense when you think of it that way. I love poems. Can I recite one for you? Is it going to take a while? I'll tell you the short version. <clears throat> I sent a message to the fish. I told them this is what I wish. The little fishes of the sea, they sent an answer back to me. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because... Because why? That's the end of the poem. Ah. Well... That was pointless. I'm gonna go to the game. Bye, Humpty Dumpty. It's cool. I can wait here for someone else to put me up right. Oh, it's open. That's easy enough. Whoa. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Um, excuse me. Um, pardon me. Uh, coming through. Um, can I speak to your manager? That would be me. What are you doing? I'm drawing my memoir. Here's me as a baby making daisy chains in the garden. Here's me as a teenager listening to rock music. And here is me as a young man fighting a jabberwock. Oh, I've heard of that one. Good. Usually nobody's heard of it. I've heard of it. So that makes two people who know of my adventures now, you and nobody. What? Nobody isn't a person. Yes, he is. He's standing right there. There's nobody there. Exactly. See, you get it. You get me. Hello, King. Hello, my messengers. Who did you see on the road ahead? Nobody. That can't be right. Nobody is right here. We do have news, though. It's so peculiar that you both speak together at the exact same time. Thank you. We've been practicing a long time. We've got this routine down pat. That's very impressive. You humble us. This is merely a testament to what you can do with hard work and also a nearby dance studio to practice synchronizing in. Did we mention we also have a dancing routine? You did not. Well, here goes nothing. It's not much of a dance. But it's choreographed perfectly. I guess that's true. Anyway, we came to tell you what's ahead. It appears there's a fight in a room. A fight? Oh no! Who's fighting? Them. Them? Oh, them. They're always fighting. It's very rude of them to fight. Oh, uh, can someone please explain to me what's going on here? We're sorry, we, we should, should have clarified. The them we are fighting is the lion and the unicorn. Whoa, a lion and a unicorn in the same place? What are they fighting over? My crown. Why are they fighting each other if you have the crown? They're not very smart. If you would like, we'll tell you all about them. Yes, please. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I can't wait to hear all about the lion and the unicorn. We shall tell the tale. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. Some gave them white bread, some gave them brown. Some gave them rum cake and drummed them out of town. So does the one that wins the fight win the crown? No, it's my crown. Come this way. 
And so Alice followed her new companions along the path until they came upon a small town. A huge crowd was gathered around the center of the town square. OMG, I love it. Check. Check. Now friends, let's take a break for refreshments. Bread for everyone. Bread isn't a great refreshment. There is also plum cake. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, my stomach hurts. I feel like I'm too full to eat anything. You ate too much plum cake. But I didn't need any cake. Yes, but you will. And when you do, you will have eaten so much that you are full now. Oh, the rules of the looking glass are so annoying. That's it. I'm going to find the next square. So Alice walked away from her companions and soon found herself in a colorful forest filled with jujube -jub birds, tum-tum trees, and a cute little duck. Yo. When out of nowhere appeared a figure, a white knight. I'm here to rescue you. Rescue me? From what? I don't know. I'm a white knight. That's just what I do. Oof, that's gotta hurt. Oh, are you okay? Of course. That's the only proper way to dismount a horse. I respectfully disagree. I will accompany you to the next square, but that's as far as I can go. That's fine. I don't mind your company. <laughs> Alice and the white knight walked through the colorful forest. Although the knight did keep falling off his horse and Alice did need to help him up several times. You're not very good at riding horses, I see. I'm the best rider there is in the looking glass. Hey, what's that you got there? It's something I invented. It's a pouch that I can keep sandwiches in, but unlike other pouches, it faces down so that the rain can't get in it. But if the opening is on the bottom, won't the sandwiches fall out? Yes, but it does keep the pouch dry. What's the point of carrying it if you can't put anything in it? But if I could put something in it, it would be dry. I think your invention needs some work. Have you invented anything else? Yes, I've invented something that keeps your hair from falling out. That is amazing! See, hair always falls out because it always hangs down, because of gravity. But if hair always hung up, then it wouldn't fall out because it would just fall up. I don't think that's how it works. And so you train your hair to grow around the stick so that your hair always falls up and never falls out. I don't think gravity is why people lose hair. Well, what is it then? Aging, stress. This is where I must leave you. Oh, thank you for walking me through the forest. I'll have to check out some of your inventions sometime. Before you go, may I tell you a poem? Sure, I guess. Is it a long one? I've heard a lot of poems today. <clears throat> This poem is called, I give thee all, I can no more. I tell thee everything I can, there's little to relate. I saw an aged man, a sitting on a gate. Who are you, aged man, I said, and how is it you live? And his answer tripped through my head, like water through a sieve. He said, I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. Hey, wake up, the poem's not over yet. Oh, sorry. You know what, I think I'd better go and get to the end of the chessboard. It's been a long day. Very well then. Goodbye. I did it. I'm here. Maybe they'll let me be queen now. <gasps> oh my gosh. What is that on my head? Kids, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Something's on my head. It's heavy. It's... It's... <gasps> A crown? I mean, a crown! I did it! I'm a queen now! <laughs> Alice was overcome with so much joy that she began dancing and talking to herself. What am I gonna do now that I'm queen? Oh, I guess I can drink tea and be friends with everyone and everyone will like me because I'm queen! And I can talk to anyone I want to, whenever I want. <laughs> and they'll say, hello, your majesty. And I'll say, please, your majesty was my mother's name. <laughs> That was so funny. She was having so much fun on her own, she didn't even notice when some familiar faces approached. I do say you are very silly. Are you talking to yourself? Queens don't talk to themselves. They talk to their subjects. Subjects? Yes. Tell this young lady to stop talking to herself. 
Stop, Stop talking, talking to yourself. yourself. Thank you. Now, Red Queen, I would like to invite you to Alice's queen party this afternoon. You're throwing me a queen party? That's so fun. <laughs> oh, no, dear, you're throwing the party. We're just the guests. Oh, I like parties and I like throwing parties, but I don't like throwing parties without anyone telling me that I'm throwing a party. We just told you now. Your party is very soon. I hope you've prepared enough snacks for all of us. We love snacks. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that are cut into triangles. Oh no, how am I gonna do all this in just a few minutes? Um, oh, I have an idea. Subjects? Yes. Can you help me set up a party for myself? There must be PB&Js cut into triangles and lots of flowers like tiger lilies and daisies and butterflies and rattles and oysters and crabs and eggs and plum cake. Wow, that is so cool. Oh, oh dear. Watching all these subjects work makes me so oh, sleepy. Alice, can you sing me a lullaby? I would, but I'm afraid I don't know any lullabies. What a silly thing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid of that. I'm just saying that I don't know any. Here, I'll teach you one. hush a by lady in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready, we've time for a nap. When the feast's over, we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. That was really nice. But the White Queen was already asleep. In fact, both queens had fallen asleep. <clears throat> Guys, I mean, uh, your majesties, <laughs> does this mean that the party's off? Queen Alice, Queen Alice, give us a speech, 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 speech. Speech? Oh dear, I didn't prepare anything. I hope I say something eloquent. Let's keep reading. Oh, looking glass creatures, quoth Alice, draw near. Tis an honor to see me, a favor to hear. Tis a privilege high to have dinner and tea, along with the Red Queen, the White Queen, and me. More! more. Speak more, more, Queen Alice, no pressure. Oh, wow, no pressure, huh? Being a queen sure is more work than I thought. Now really, dear, you're being very rude to your subjects. They want to hear you speak. Won't you satisfy them? I don't know what to say. I already said some words to them, or at least I think I did, and they want more from me. Being a queen means always having to give. But I want to do what I want. You can still do that, although people may not like you as much. I thought being a queen would be more fun. That's preposterous. Just because we're the most powerful players in the game doesn't mean we can do anything. We can only move in eight directions, not infinitely. I want to move in infinite directions. I want to be able to go wherever I want on the chessboard. Well, you'll have to make your own way. But in the looking glass, you can either be a queen or you can be you. Never both. You decide who you want to be. How about that? Does a queen pull a tablecloth off of her tables? I bet not. Oh no. I already told you all, I don't speak nonsense. I don't understand the Jabberwocky poem or most of your other poems. I don't understand your rules or how time and memory works. The Looking Glass is such a strange place. Queen! And at that moment, everything stopped. There was no fighting or arguing or queens and subjects. In fact, as Alice looked down, she realized she was sitting in the same chair she had been in before, with her kittens in her lap. Wow, I wonder if that was real or a dream? You were in it, and you were the Red Queen. She was a bit rude. And you were in it too, and you were the White Queen. Actually, I didn't like her very much either. She snored too loud. Yeah, kind of like that, but like. Meow. I agree. Ooh, I disagree. The only thing I know for sure is that I don't think I'm very good at chess.
All of you are doing just fine over there in the looking glass, but maybe that place is not for me. I don't want to remember things before they happen or feel full before I get to eat cake. I'm just... Alice. And you know what? I like being Alice. I don't need to be a queen. I just need to be me. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. What do you think would be the right thing to do? Fine. I guess I'll be friends with the frog. I never thought I would say something like that out loud. Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today, we're reading The Princess and the Frog. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. That time, there was a king and queen. There they are right now. Hello. Hello. They were really good at their job. They took care of their people. They listened to the people of their kingdom. Sure, I agree that every Friday shall be Pizza Friday. Yay! Pizza! Pizza! pizza. They made the tough decisions. Hmm, should everyone in the kingdom have off from work for trampoline day? Well, it does sound like fun for everyone. Okay, I declare tomorrow everyone has the day off. Jump away! Yay! And most importantly, they were kind. No, no, I insist. After you. Oh my, thank you, your majesty. So it's no surprise that they were also really great parents. And their daughters, AKA princesses, were also pretty awesome. The youngest daughter named Tanya was really special. Some might even say enchanting. In fact, the sun even marveled when it shone on her face. Oh my, you're marvelous. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Aw, that is so nice. Princess Tanya was not just into jewels, fancy dresses, and tea parties, <laughs> although those things were all pretty cool too. Yeah, I have lots of hopes and dreams, and I really love, love, love soccer, or some might say football. Who am I kidding? I don't play soccer in this dress. That's better. Princess Tanya was really good at soccer. She played on her kingdom's team. They were the Golden Warriors, and they won a lot of games, and sometimes lost, but always had fun. One day at her game. Okay guys, this is for the championship. You can do it. Work together. Go, Go Golden, Golden Warriors. Warriors. Come on, princess. This is your chance. For the winning goal, you can do it. No! I really need to work on my skills. So that's what she did. I practiced day in and day out. Of course, as long as I finish my chores. Yeah, princesses do chores too. <laughs> I practiced my kicking. I practiced my blocking. I practiced my dramatic falling on the ground pretending I'm injured. Ah! I practiced my victory dancing. I practiced until I was so tired. Wow, this is so fun. Make sure you rest and then keep practicing. You know what they say, practice makes. Perfect, I know, practice makes perfect. No, I was going to say practice makes you a hard worker. It's not about being perfect. It's important to work hard when you're going for your dreams. Thanks, Mom. You're so wise. <laughs> well, I mean, I used to be quite the athlete in my day. Huh? Yeah, Mom. You've told us just a few times how good you were. <laughs> well, I'm going to go play some more. See ya. Princess Tanya went for a walk through the forest near the castle. She had her special golden ball with her. Mom said I should rest, and my most favorite place to chill out is by the linden tree. There's this relaxing well. Sometimes I even make wishes on the well. Hey, Princess Tanya, what's up? Seen any rainbows recently? No, actually, I haven't. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> Here, cat. Oops, sorry. The whole no legs thingy makes playing soccer tricky. That's okay. You're good at a lot of other things. Aw, oh, shucks. And you are really good at lots of stuff too, princess. Like, obviously, you're a soccer star. I'm doing my best. Watch this. 
Uh-oh, it's about to fall in. No, no! Oh, no. Oh, the man. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, my golden ball. Princess Tanya lost her golden ball in the well. <laughs> the son tried his best to help. Hey, princess, here you go. Have some me shine. Get it? Me shine instead of sunshine? It's no use, Mr. Sun. My ball is gone forever. Well, maybe not forever. Cheer up. How can I cheer up when my most favorite thing in all the land is gone, lost, vanished? <laughs> this is very sad. Maybe a little dramatic, but... <laughs> Who? Me? Dramatic? <gasps> what? Sorry. Forget I said anything. I'm just gonna go home. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya had gone back to the castle with no ball in hand. That afternoon, when it was tea time, Princess Tanya was sitting with her sisters and her mom. She was not her usual happy self. They could see something was wrong. Princess Tanya, why the long face? Yeah, you're eating your favorite chocolate biscuits. You should be so happy. But I'm not happy. I'm way upset, you guys. Uh, yeah, we can tell. What gives? I lost my most favorite golden ball. It fell in the well when I was practicing. And now what will I do? And how will I get serious skills if I don't have it? And it was my good luck charm. And I feel like I've lost a part of my soul. And I can't stop crying in the middle of everything. Even when I do my chores, it's like, here I am sweeping, but I'm so sad. Sweep, sweep, wah. That's so sad. And, and, sweet daughter, take a deep breath. <sighs> Sorry. Now, why don't you go back to the well and see if you can get it back? Okay, I'll try. So the princess went back to the well by the linden tree. And of course, when she got there, no ball was in sight. She started crying again. Why? Why? Uh-oh, here we go again. I'm sorry, Mr. Sun, and I'm sorry I was so rude to you yesterday. I just feel so sad. I get it. <laughs> Why are you crying? Mr. Sun, I just told you. That wasn't me. Huh? Then whose voice was that? Hello? It's me. Ah! You're, you're, you're talking, and you're a frog. You're a talking frog. Uh, I mean, you were just talking to the sun, so... Right. True. <clears throat> Anyways... So why are you so sad? I could hear your cries from miles away. Well, yesterday my most favorite golden soccer ball fell into the well when I was trying to show the sun some really cool tricks. Hmm. That does sound like a problem. It is. And now I don't know what to do. <laughs> hmm. I bet I could help. That's sweet, but I don't really know how a tiny talking frog is gonna be able to get me a new golden ball. Oh, no, I mean, I could go fetch your ball for you. Really? Yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. And you look like you're a good person. Who needs a helping hand? Poor flipper. What, what would you call this? Um, I'm not sure. So are you gonna get my ball or not? Absolutely. Great, thanks. Wow, that is so cool. Okay, but what do I get in return? There's always a catch. So? Well, that is like my most favorite thing of all the things I have. So you can have my clothes, my pearls, my precious stones, even my golden crown. Thanks, but I don't need all that fancy stuff. Well, then what can I offer you? Friendship. I don't have any friends. Huh? You know, this royal forest, this wishing well, these woods, they all get pretty lonely. I'd love to have a new friend. We could do lots of cool stuff together. Um... If you say yes, I'll jump in and get your ball right now. Well... I'm not quite sure what kind of companionship a frog can offer. They're kind of slimy. And don't they usually live in water? But I'm really desperate here. So... Okay, you got yourself a deal. Deal. Ew. I mean, thanks. Princess Tanya watched as the frog took a running start and leapt into the well. And she waited, and waited, and waited. 
then suddenly the frog emerged to the surface of the water with a loud gasp of air. Got it. Oh, I'm your hero. Um, that is not my ball. My ball is golden colored and beautiful and so special to me. Are you sure? You don't want to take a closer look? Maybe it's yours, but just got dirty. Ah, ew! OMG, what was that? Sorry. Oh, just a fish. Well, thank you so much for trying, Mr. Frog. Guess it's no use. My ball's gone forever. I guess I'll just move out of the castle and change my name and go start a little surf shop on the beach. Um, that sounds like a slight overreaction. Oh, maybe I am overreacting, but what am I gonna do? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya was sure she would never see her ball ever again. Wow, it's gone forever. I'll never get it back. Hey, don't cry. If you start crying, then I'm going to start crying. And then... Let me try one more time, beautiful princess. If I can find it, you'll be my friend, right? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Thank you. The frog dove down to the bottom of the well again to find the ball. Aha! You said golden soccer ball, yeah? I also see a golden football, a golden baseball, a golden hockey puck. You want those two? Oh, just the soccer ball is fine, thanks. You sure? So many cool things down here. Just the ball, thank you. Suddenly, there it was. That is amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy I can kiss, um, give you a nice nod of thanks. <laughs> See ya, frog dude. Where are you going? You promised we'd be friends. You gave me a high five. But Princess Tanya was so excited, she forgot about her deal with the frog. She dribbled it all the way home. Wait for me! You're running too fast. I can't keep up. Oh man, I should start working out. Yay, my ball! Princess! The frog chased after Princess Tanya, but soon she was out of sight. Still, the frog wasn't going to give up. All he wanted was to be her friend. Seriously, that's the thanks I get. Better start heading towards the castle. This might take a while. Meanwhile, Princess Tanya had already made it back to the castle. And she shoots! She scores! Tanya dear, please don't kick your soccer ball at the house. Oh, sorry mom. <laughs> I'll just practice my footwork. That night, Princess Tanya peacefully went to sleep and she dreamt of the most magical things. Wow, this is so fun. And there she goes, ladies and gentlemen. She's off. She's faster than a rocket ship. I'm going to make the winning goal. She's doing it, folks. She's really doing it. Watch out. Here I... Huh? Hi. Wait a minute. Princess Tanya woke up from her dream a little confused, but in a split second, she was fine again. She had her ball, and it was all good. She was so glad she could sing. Tra la 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 I don't know the words to this song. It's a good day to be alive <laughs> and maybe do some art projects and of course, play soccer. Oops, I don't wanna be late for breakfast. The king, queen, and princess were all eating a big wonderful breakfast. Fruit salad, sparkling cider, French toast with strawberries, sprinkles, and whipped cream. Princess Tanya's favorite. Mmm. This is so yummy. I agree. La 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 la. I love sprinkles and whipped cream and all these yummy things. Tra la 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 la. <laughs> you seem happy today. I got my golden soccer ball back. Now I can practice forever and ever. Congratulations. How'd you get it back? Um, well, you see, I am, um, I don't remember, I think. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it! Princess Tanya excitedly ran to the door as fast as she could. As she opened the door, she looked around but couldn't see anybody. When she looked down... Hi, best friend! Ah! It was the frog! Princess Tanya screamed and slammed the door shut. What is it, dear? N nothing. Let me see! She's right! There's nothing there! Ew! Gross! 
What's all the commotion? What's out there? Is it a giant? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the frog was outside the door. All the princesses had shrieked about seeing him at their house. But the king wanted to know what was going on. What's all the screaming? It's so early in the morning. I haven't even finished my coffee for all this excitement. There's a, a thing outside. If it's not a giant, then is it a monster? OMG, no, Dad, it's a frog. A giant frog? Uh, no, Dad, it's just a regular sized frog. You really do need to drink some coffee. Oh, that's a relief. I met a giant frog once. He was very rude. No table manners at all. He did keep the flies away, though. More ice cream sundaes. You didn't even say please. Please give me ice cream sundaes. That's not much better. I don't like your tone. Mm, never mind, I'm full. Ugh, so rude. That's so not cool. Well, anyways, Tanya, what does the frog want from you? Well, it's an interesting story. Do you remember when I lost my favorite golden ball? Of course we remember. That happened literally yesterday. I asked you about it like a minute ago. So when I went to the well, that frog offered to help me get my ball back. And he did. But I also made a promise. <gasps> a promise? To a frog that talks? My queen, a talking frog is the least of our worries now. Our daughter made a promise. Yeah, and I promised him that we could be friends, but I'm not sure how I feel about that now. What do you mean? Well, he's a frog. We're so different. What would we even do together? I can't have afternoon tea with him or play soccer or bake cookies. He doesn't even have hands or feet, just like these web thingies. Outside the door, the frog wondered if saying something more poetic might get the royal family to open the door. Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Don't you know what yesterday you said to me down by the well? Youngest daughter of the king, open up the door for me. Hello. I tried to rhyme. I thought it was sublime. Oh, there I go again. I didn't even mean to. Now I'm feeling blue. Ah, I can't stop. <laughs> that was so funny. Wow, that frog is quite poetic. How can you deny such a well-spoken creature? Your mother is right, my dear daughter. You made a promise, and we are a family of promise keepers. I honestly didn't think that a frog could live outside the water. Of course they can. Frogs are amphibians. You should have paid more attention in school. I mean, it must have taken him ages to get here. He is pretty tiny. Maybe it's because your friendship really matters to him. Hmm, I just never saw myself being much of a frog person. <laughs> You must respect all living creatures in our kingdom. This frog did something very kind for you from the bottom of his little froggy heart. And in this royal kingdom, being kind is very important. Plus, I'm sure that the frog hops very high. He'd be a great buddy on trampoline day. That's true. You know we like you to make good choices, so it's up to you. What do you think would be the right thing to do? Fine, I guess I'll be friends with the frog. I never thought I would say something like that out loud. Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Whoa, a talking frog. OMG, I love it. Oh please, sister. You talk to your pet rabbit all the time. What, how did you know that? Um, your pet rabbit talks to us too. She told us you snore really loud and drool in your sleep. Do not. Do too. Mom. Um, hello. Can I get a hand here? Oh, sorry, Tanya. Um, come here, little frog. Why don't you give Tanya a little space? Excuse me. I may look little, but I'm not a baby. I'm 30 years old. 30? Whoa, you're basically a grown-up. Yeah, a real grown-up. Like, I used to have a job doing royal... Wait, never mind. Forget I said anything. Doing what? What were you going to say? Um, nothing. Never mind. We are brand new friends. We don't need to be spelling out secrets right away, right? Huh? Okay. Weird. Hey, do you think there's something fishy with that frog? Fishy? I thought he was a frog. Now I'm all confused. No. Ugh. 
fishy, like hiding something. Like, he said he had a job before. I didn't know frogs could work. I mean, there's no possible way he's like something other than a frog, right? Like a disguise. <laughs> nah. nah. Oh no, let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The princesses had been discussing their impression of their new friend. Maybe there is something more to this frog guy than meets the eye. Ooh, like something magical? You know I love magic. Uh -huh. Dear daughters, young friend, would you care to join us at the table? Wait, if this is your dad and you're a princess, then that means he's the king. Cool, good day, your highness. It's so nice to meet you. Let's eat. Mr. Frog, we can pull up a chair for you. Or a lily pad, or a chair made out of lily pads. I'm sure we have one lying around somewhere. Yeah, we make furniture out of leaves all the time. We made a lava lamp out of leaves. Cool. Now let's make a new bunny friend for Rabbit. Not sure that's a good idea. Rabbit keeps eating the friends we make him. Aw, he really doesn't understand. Maybe we should stop making Rabbit new friends out of his food. <laughs> that was so funny. Thank you for your hospitality. I would be most delighted if we could share. Princess Tanya, I just love sharing food with friends. I agree. The queen and I share chocolate chip cookies at tea time every day. Um, sure. Let me give you a lift. So, Mr. Froggy, uh, is it all right if I call you Mr. Froggy? Well, my name is Prince. I mean, uh, Prince. Like in Paw Prince. Definitely not Royal Prince or anything like that. Yeah, you can call me Paw Prince. Well, we are quite happy to have you here, Paw Prince. That's an interesting name. Well, it's not like he would change the name his parents gave him. That would take a lot of paperwork. Didn't he mention before that he had a royal job? I suppose we'll just need to get to know him more. Tell us, poor prince, is there anything you'd like to eat? I would be most happy to share anything that Princess Tanya is having. Um, sure. Take whatever you'd like. Ooh, those sprinkles look yummy. I, I love, love sprinkles. sprinkles. Wow, this is so fun. Um, oh yeah, uh, that's cool. <laughs> but actually, would it be all right if we added some cinnamon to the whipped cream? I love cinnamon. It reminds me of my grandma's cookies. Surely. Tonya, dear, can you ask the royal chef to make some special whipped cream with cinnamon in it? Okay. Princess Tanya knew she had to try her best to keep her promise. So she went to the kitchen to ask the chef to make a special meal for her new froggy friend. Hello? Chef Flo? Arr, ye may enter. Hi, Chef Flo. Thanks for putting all the extra sprinkles in the breakfast today. <laughs> Aye, you're welcome, my lady. What can I do for you? We have a guest for breakfast, and, well, he wants something special. I'm always glad to make special food for special guests. What would your new friend like? He wants cinnamon in the whipped cream. Is your new friend a frog, matey? Yes, how did you know? Oh, frogs are known to love cinnamon. Oh, cool. But I don't know if I would call him my friend. Why is that, Princess Tanya? Well, he is a frog, and I'm a human, so I don't know how I'm going to make this work. You know, when I used to work on the ships, going back and forth to the old country, I met every type of creature you can imagine. I befriended mermaids. Come swim with us, Flo. I befriended the waves. Ooh, this is so exciting. Arr, can you take us to the North Pole? Sure, make sure you wear a scarf. It's cold up there. Hold on tight. Whoa! I befriended fish? I don't understand you, but I'm sure you're nice. One day, there was a huge storm. Me and the crew were afraid our ship would sink, or worse, lead us to the land of the dragons! Wait, dragons? That actually sounds pretty cool. You're right, dragons are awesome! Anyway, back to the story. 
Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, a tornado approached! Ah, the tornado! We're doomed! The tornado was scary! It could have ripped our boat to shreds! But then I thought about my kindness rule. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Chef Flo had been telling Princess Tanya about her kindness rule. My kindness rule. Your kindness rule? Yes, my kindness rule. Always be kind. Even if it's a little scary or difficult, it's cool to be kind. Yeah, you've told me that once or twice before. I've known you for a long time, Princess, and you've always been very accepting, which is a very princessly thing to be. Aw, thanks. <laughs> now back to the story. Well, I thought maybe if we were kind to the tornado, it would not hurt us. Hi, tornado! How are you doing today? Uh, I'm not great. I have no friends. Everyone is afraid of me. That's so sad. That must be so tough. Nobody takes time to get to know me. I just wish I had someone to talk to. Well, I'll be your friend, Tornado. You're not afraid of me? Of course not. Would you like some stew? I would love some. Hey, it seems like you're in a real jam with this storm. How about I use my wind to take you someplace safe? Oh, like the beach? Please tell me the beach. I really, 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 really want to go to the beach. I love making sandcastles, getting a suntan, drinking coconut water right from the coconut. Sure, the beach it is. That's awesome. Thank you, Tornado. Please call me Stanley. And so, the tornado picked up our ship and brought us safely to shore. To this day, me and Stanley have tea once a month. You see, Princess Tanya, just by taking a little extra time to talk to someone who is different than me, not only saved us from a really bad disaster, but I also made a new friend. Sometimes you can make a friend in the most unexpected places. Gee, thanks, Chef Flo. That's really nice to hear. I mean, maybe the frog will turn out to be one of the greatest friends I've ever had. Aw, that's so sweet. Meanwhile, back at the table, Paw Prince the Frog was cracking the royal family up with hilarious wildlife jokes. So I says to the guy, those aren't golf balls, they're lizard eggs. <laughs> Man, oh man, oh, I haven't laughed like this in ages. <laughs> you are something else, Mr. Prince. Now, tell me more about that volunteer work you've been doing. Oh, well, we help people in the kingdom who need it. Whipped cream with cinnamon coming through. Sweet, literally. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, that looks really good. And you're right, it smells just like my grandma's cookies too. See, we have that in common. Yeah, I guess you're right. Princess, I would be most delighted if you shared this special treat with me. Sure. <laughs> That's yummers. Ooh, I want to try. Me too. Well, I wouldn't mind a little smackerel of whipped cream. We can all share. So the whole royal family and the frog enjoyed sharing the frog's whipped cream and other treats too. They laughed and got to know each other more. When breakfast was over, Princess Tanya knew what she had to do. So uh, Paw Prince, you wanna stay and hang out? I have a soccer ball with your name on it. Oh, not literally your name, it's gold. Remember the gold soccer ball that you rescued for me? Yeah, I know, I know. Let's go. We're coming, We're coming too. too. Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, Paw Prince, think fast. Ha, nice kick, Princess. The princesses and the frog had a lovely day. Not only did they play soccer, but they made necklaces out of real flowers. They went for a walk in the kingdom and tried fresh bread from the baker. They listened to some musicians playing in the town square. This has been the best day ever. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Today has been awesome. See? It's cool to make new friends and make new memories. You want to come back to the castle? It's family game night. Tonight is my pick, and I love Twister. 
you had me at family game night. I'm in. Hat night after dessert, of course. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> it was finally time for family game night. They played like a million rounds of Twister. Right foot red. <laughs> my, oh my, you are so good at this game. Yeah, well, frogs have sticky toes, so Twister is pretty much my jam. One more round? Yes, left hand yellow. My, my favorite, favorite color. color. Your favorite color is yellow? OMG, your favorite color is yellow too? See, BFFs for life, I knew it. It was true. The more Tanya and Paw Prince spent time together, the more they realized they really did enjoy each other's company and had a lot in common. Left foot green. <laughs> Frog, you win again. Three, two, one. <laughs> Told you I was good at Twister. Next time we'll play chess. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After a fun game of Twister, Tanya and Paw Prince the Frog got ready for bed. They got into their PJs, they brushed their teeth, and combed their hair. Even though it was almost bedtime, Princess Tanya didn't want the day to end. She was having so much fun with her new frog friend. I know, how about we paint our fingernails? I'd love to, but I don't actually have nails. That's okay. We can do face masks instead. This will exfoliate your pores. Thank you. Uh, sorry I'm so slimy. It's kind of a frog thing. Tanya dear, time for bed. No staying up too late. You have a soccer game tomorrow. Okay, but where should Paw Prince sleep? I'm happy to sleep on the floor, or a wet rag if you have one. Nonsense. Only the best spa guests. Wait, I have an idea. And with that, Princess Tanya took the frog to the pool room. You can sleep in this. It's super comfy. Thank you so much, Princess Tanya. I really had a nice day. Me too. Oh, so cute. And thank you again for bringing my golden ball back. You're welcome. You must really love that ball if you were willing to go through all this trouble just to get it back. Yes, I do love my very special golden ball. We go way back. Ooh, I love stories. Tell me more. <laughs> sure. Once upon a time, I mean, a few years ago, when I was much younger, I never liked the same toys as my sisters. My family would give me dolls and super fancy things for my birthday, but I wasn't super into them. What did I do with this? I tried other things like painting, reading fairy tales, and even go-karting. This traffic is terrible. But nothing excited me. I wanted to do something where I could move around and play with other kids. One weekend, my grandma and grandpa visited. They used to be king and queen before my mom and dad. Queen grandma, king grandpa. Good morning, Tanya. You've gotten so tall. We're going to have so much fun today. Yes. And we did. Grandpa helped me with arts and crafts, and Grandma drank tea. Oh, that is so nice. It's so nice outside today. I wish we could do something fun in the sun. Yeah, play fun games outside. I have an idea. Have you heard of soccer? Huh? What's that? It's a game where you run and kick a ball with your feet. In some places, they call it football. I want to try. So me and Queen Grandma played soccer for hours. I learned how to dribble, shoot, and score. You did an amazing job, Tanya dear. Here, I have a present for you. A present? I love presents. Wow, cool. Thank you, Queen Grandma. I can't wait to play with it. Hey, pass it to me. OK. I don't see my Queen Grandma and King Grandpa anymore, but I still have the ball and I play with it every day. And every time I play soccer, I think of my grandma. Oh. <laughs> oh no, why are you sad? I'm not sad, I'm happy. That was a very nice story. It must be so great to have people in your life who are so kind. You are very lucky. You're right. Anyway, good night, Paw Prince. 
Good night, princess. That night, after Princess Tanya fell asleep, she had a very strange dream. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Princess Tanya was having a really crazy dream. Wow, Paw Prince, you're really good at soccer. <laughs> yes, we should be teammates for life. Do you like that idea? I do. That sounds fun. I do too. Queen Grandma, is that really you? Yes, sweet Tanya. I am so proud of you. I was just telling my new friend about you and all the good times we had together. I miss those times. Me too, Tanya. Me and Paw Prince are gonna be teammates for life. I approve and I now pronounce you goalie and center forward. And then Princess Tanya woke up in a flash. Whoa, what a strange dream. I wonder what it means. <sighs> That's so magical. Meanwhile, Paw Prince the Frog was having his own dilemma. He woke up before anyone else in the castle and went to see his friend, Mr. Sun. So the thing is, son, time is running out. What do you mean? The spell that the witch put on me a long time ago that turned me from a prince into a frog for 10 years. Oh, that spell, go on. But once I turn back into a prince, what if things change between me and Tanya? What do you mean? Like, we've become such good friends. I, I don't want to ruin a good thing. Well, I think Princess Tanya will understand. And I don't want Tanya to only like me because I'm a prince. I'm more than just royalty. I want her to like me for me. Tanya has a good heart. She will like you no matter what you look like. So, Paw Prince, wait a minute, I just got that. Paw Prince, like Prince, cause he's a royal prince. Whoa, this story is so crazy. Anyway, Paw Prince walked back to the castle and suddenly. Whoa, 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 wow. Uh oh, it's happening. The 10 year spell is over. And there he was, the royal frog prince. The spell was broken. That prince is so handsome. Whoa, I look good. I gotta get back to the castle before everyone wakes up. Oh, ouch. But all this ruckus was so loud that it woke up Tanya and she came to the door to see if her friend the frog was okay. But she was in for a surprise. Oh, Paw Prince, I heard a, uh... hey. What the, who are you? You, you, you better stand back, mister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tanya, Tanya. Hey, how do you know my name? Are you a spy? No, Tanya, I know I look a little different, but it's me. You, 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 who, you're some sort of intruder in my house? I'm gonna call the cops in 30 seconds if you don't tell me what's going on here. It's me, Paw Prince. <gasps> Paw Prince? Did you eat Paw Prince and now he's talking to me from inside your belly? Open your mouth, let me see. I'll save you, Paw Prince. No, I'm actual Paw Prince. I'm not a frog anymore. So the prince explained the whole story to Princess Tanya. He told her about the spell and also apologized about hiding his true identity from her. This is crazy. But I mean, deep down you are you no matter what. So, you're saying we can still be friends? Of course. So, friend, do you want to come to my soccer game this afternoon? Yes, I'd love that. Oh, so cute. Princess Tanya was playing really well at her game that day. The prince watched her and saw how passionate she was about soccer and how happy she seemed. He even loved her silly victory dance after she scored a goal. She was killing it. Then he realized something. I really like Princess Tanya, and not just because she's a princess, but she is so kind, she's chasing her dreams, and she's a good friend. I think I love. Dude, who are you talking to? Er, uh, I was just practicing my poetry reciting. Roses are red, violets are blue. I really like picnics and ponies, and, uh, a stew. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, okay, you're acting a little weird. No, I just really like soccer. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, duh. 
And now that you're more bigger, we can finally play together. So as you guys can tell, the prince was starting to have feelings for the princess, but he wasn't sure he was ready to tell her yet. Yeah, we are still getting to know each other. I just gotta keep it cool. Uh, yeah, so we should do something or whatever. We could ride motorcycles. Whee! We could be cool and go to a concert. We could visit a cool ice sculpture. We could be casual and just like chill. What? You've never said that you like those things. Seriously, why are you acting so weird and not like yourself? Uh-oh, guys. What am I gonna do? Do I tell her? Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Princess Tanya had just finished her soccer game when the prince was acting really weird, but she didn't know why. Now that my game's over, what do you want to do, Paw Prince? Actually, I think I can tell you now. My real name isn't Paw Prince. It's actually Prince Jeremy. Oh, man. I'm so used to calling you Paw Prince. Oh, Paw Prince. I get it. Hey, how about I give you a ride home? You can do that? Yeah, now that I'm a human again, I can get us a carriage. Wow, cool. Can you teach me to whistle like that? Sure. The first step to being able to whistle is not being a frog. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> that was hilarious. Nailed it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So, since you're a prince, where's your kingdom? Pretty close to here. I haven't been there in so long since I became a frog. I should probably let my parents know I'm a human again. Well, why don't we go to your kingdom? You can tell your parents you're okay, and maybe you can show me things you like to do for fun there. Yeah, my parents are probably so worried. I'm like 10 years past my curfew. But let's stop at my castle first so I can change out of my soccer gear. I probably smell like a soccer field. I think you smell just fine. Wonderful even. I mean, um, <clears throat> yeah. Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy arrived at her castle to find her family outside playing Twister again. Right hand green. Does it count if I put my hand on the grass? That's green. Hi, Tanya. And other person? Who's that? It's Paul Prince. Turns out he's a real prince who was cursed by a witch. I'm Prince Jeremy. Oh, I always knew I liked you, Paul Prince. Mom, Dad, we're gonna go visit Jeremy's parents for a bit, but I promise we won't be back after dark. Of course, dear. Princess Tanya went to her room and got ready to go to the prince's kingdom. This is so strange. I usually don't care what I wear, but I feel like I have to look so nice for the prince today. Why am I so nervous? Maybe I like him? Oh my gosh, I like him. But after a short time, Princess Tanya pulled herself together and went outside to meet Prince Jeremy. That looks so beautiful. Wow, Princess Tanya, you look fantastic. I, I mean, you always do. Uh, uh, I mean, forget I said anything. Aw, thanks. As the carriage rode off towards Prince Jeremy's kingdom, Princess Tanya felt her eyes began to grow heavy. It had been a long day. I'm just gonna catch some Z's for a sec. Oh, don't mind me. I'm so glad we're gonna be teammates for life. Me too. We make a great team. Like the sun and the moon, or the grass and flowers, or a BF and GF. Yeah, just like that. Meanwhile, Prince Jeremy also had a lot on his mind. I just don't know what to do. Should I tell her how I feel? What if she doesn't feel the same? It might mess up our friendship. I would rather have Princess Tanya in my life as a friend than not at all. But little did Prince Jeremy know that Princess Tanya wasn't asleep at all. She had heard everything he said. Oh my gosh, should I tell him that I heard him say that? Princess Tanya, are you awake? Oh, yes, I'm awake now. I just woke up this very second and not any earlier than that. Uh, okay, well, we're here in my kingdom. As Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy stepped out of the carriage, they were greeted with a beautiful sight. Wow, this place is amazing. I could live here forever. Maybe one day you could. What do you mean? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? Nothing. I mean, what? Kids, 
What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Tanya and Jeremy had just arrived at his kingdom and it was pretty cool. They were greeted by some adoring fans from the town. Prince Jeremy, is that you? You are all grown up. How handsome you are. Your parents are gonna be so happy you're home. Aw, thank you all. And who is this beautiful friend you have with you? Beautiful? Is she beautiful? Oh, yeah, she is. I just noticed. This is Princess Tanya. Hello. We're so Welcome. happy you're here. Hi. But then, suddenly, Prince Jeremy heard a familiar voice. Jeremy! Young Jeremy, is that you? Heinrich! Prince! My dear Prince Jeremy! My oh my, you are tall! Heinrich! It's been far too long. Princess Tanya, this is my family's butler and our dear friend, Heinrich. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> but what's happened to you? Well, the day you left us, do you remember? Yep, we were playing croquet. Four! But when I came back, you were gone, vanished, and I called and called after you for hours. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's so sad. Let the sadness be over. Why? I'm feeling so many emotions. My heart is happy again now that you've returned, Prince Jeremy. Yay! Hey, since we are celebrating, think we can go see my parents? Why, of course! The reunion of Prince Jeremy and his parents was one for the record books. There was laughter, tears, stories, and all-around happiness. Oh, Queen Charlotte and King Liam, it's so cool to meet you, and becoming friends with your son has been so special. Well, you guys came on the perfect day. Tonight is our annual ice cream dance party. We'd love for you to join. I, I love, love dancing. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that night at the ice cream dance party, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy had a blast. He introduced her to old friends. They looked up at the stars. They danced. They ate tons of ice cream sundaes. They even kicked a soccer ball around. And they danced some more. I'm having so much fun. I just wish my family was here to experience this too. <laughs> but what Tanya didn't know was that Prince Jeremy had already secretly planned a big surprise. All of a sudden, some familiar faces showed up at the dance party. We're here. You know we can't miss a party! We have FOMO! Ooh, I like to shake it, shake it! We came as soon as we heard the word ice cream! Yay! I'm so happy! Ah! Prince Jeremy, you planned this? Well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much! Um, Princess Tanya? Yeah? The thing is, I wanted to invite your family here so that they could be together with my family and we could all share in this special moment. Um. What special moment? Well, the thing is, when the witch put that spell on me to become a frog, the catch was that whoever I was hanging out with when the spell was broken was who I should marry. Um, and who were you hanging out with? You! <laughs> but it's not just because of the spell. Since the moment I met you, there was something special about you. And the more we became friends, I knew I was falling in love with you. And I want to marry you and live happily ever after. Um. That's a lot. I really like you too, but we kind of just met not too long ago. Maybe we should start by going on a date. You're right, I like that idea. And that night, everyone was so happy and relieved to be together. The two families danced the night away. And little secret, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy did get married, and they smerged their two kingdoms together, and all the people lived together in harmony, and of course, they all loved playing soccer together. And you know what? They lived happily ever after. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> She bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. Okay, help! Story time, story time. Miss Booksy's gonna meet you inside. Her magic books, Cinderella's dress in blue. Goldilocks and spinning clock. Hey. Wiggle snap, wiggle snap, everybody wiggle.
welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading The Snow Queen's Frozen Kingdom. Giggle, snap, story time! Hi, I'm Gerda. I grew up in a place called Florida. You know, where everything is always happy and fun and super sunny. Watch out! Siggy! Sorry, Gerd. Wally overshot that one. Oops, can't control these things sometimes. Well, that's all right, guys. Who am I to get in the way of some fun in the sun, eh? <laughs> Just don't forget some sunscreen. As you can tell, I had a lot of friends, but no one made me happier than my most special friend of all. <sighs> Kay. <laughs> we did everything together, like fly kites, and build sandcastles, and make flowers. A rose for you, my lady. And go on awesome vacations to Kay's grandma in Alaska. Alaska, here we come! <laughs> hey Kay, what do Alaskans order at a restaurant? Um, I don't know. Ice burgers? <laughs> Get it? Ice burger? Well, I thought it was funny. Burr! Sure is cold out here. Good thing I packed my winter coat. So anyway, Kay and I had a really fun trip in Alaska, but I was ready to go back home to sunshine and happiness. <laughs> That's when things got really, really not happy. There we were, sitting with the snowmen and eating ice cream when suddenly... Ah! Snow bees! Oh, ah! The meanest bees ever! Go get your own ice cream! Ow! Ow! Eat! That hurts! Ow! Stop! Stop! Me no snow bees! Oh, stop right there! But it was too late. The snow bees had already stung Kay like a hundred times. Not to mention finish all his ice cream will not let some snow bees ruin our vacation. Right, Kay? Right? Hmm. Huh. Mm, okay, I guess I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny joke, Kay. <laughs> no, but seriously. I've had enough of your happiness, okay? Leave me alone. But I, I, I don't understand. I thought we were BFFs forever. You gave me a rose! I hate roses. Okay. You're probably just in pain from all those snow bee stings. Where did he go? Kay? Kay? If only the snowman could talk, I bet he'd know where Kay went. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's that, Mr. Snow? Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. Suddenly, I had an idea. Very clever. Ah, uh, finally, something other than that carrot nose. You know, I can't even smell out of that thing. Yeah, okay, okay, now please, Mr. Snow, can you tell me if you've seen a dude, yay hi, leave from this spot? Why yes, yes I did, headed right down to the River of Doom. River of Doom? Oh no, oh no, 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 no! Did I say doom? I mean flume. Like where kids go on log flume rides in the summer. It's right over there. Phew, <laughs> so there was still hope I could catch up with Kay at the river. If only I could get through all this snow. Gerda marched through the icy forest on her search for Kay. Then she remembered a safety rule her scout leader had taught her. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay? Who are you? Who are you? I was taking a nap and you woke me up. So I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hobsworth, Girl Scout Ambassador and President of my school's Botany Club. Very impressive. I'm Lady Shannon Von Sol, Sorceress of Eternal Summer. It doesn't look or feel like Eternal Summer around here. Oh, well, not here, obviously. Come see. Sorry about all that shouting. I'm looking for my friend Kay. Word on the street is he went towards the Snow Queen's palace. Oh, she's a brat. Maybe even evil. Here we are. Still not getting any summer vibes. <laughs> Look at all the colors. Oh, wow. Awesome. It's like paradise in here. It looks just like Florida. That's where I'm from. <laughs> it's always like summer there. Wonderful. Then you'll feel right at home here. Well, I can't stay. I have to go find Kay. But maybe we'll stop by on our way home? Oh, just stay for a bit. I have popsicles. Hmm, I love popsicles, but no thank you. I really have to go. Suit yourself. Uh-oh. Okay, so how do I get out? Gerda looked around but couldn't see the door anywhere. She hadn't been there long. How could she have already gotten lost? Everywhere I look, there's just more palm trees. They're everywhere. Oh, where did that sorceress lady go? Owie! Oh, 
darn coconut. Oh. oh, actually, now that I'm sitting, I realize I'm pretty tired. Ooh. You know, I think I'll just take sleep a little and just, uh, then I'll go find Kay. Gerda drifted off to sleep and found herself in a crazy dream. She had found Kay, except he was different. He was a prince. Wow, hey Kay. But Kay ignored her. Kay, I came to rescue you. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appeared. She was dressed head to toe in white silk and sparkly crystals. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> she bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. Wow, just like my grandma does. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Okay, not like my grandma. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. Kay, help! But Kay looked on as if he didn't even hear her. Kay! <gasps> Scary, I hope Kay hasn't become frozen. Okay, I had my nap, now I gotta go. But Gerda realized she still didn't know the way out of eternal summer. Where is Lady Shannon Von Soul? Hello? Hello, lady. So not cool. It's like she tried to trap me in here. Wait a second. Doesn't sorceress really just mean witch? Oh, no. She's a witch. Not necessarily. Oh? Sorcery is just magic. So technically, there could be a nice sorceress. Oh, OK. But she isn't. Lady Shannon Von Sol isn't nice? She won't let me leave. I'm a prisoner. At night, I sleep in a cage. Well, it's really cold outside. I don't think a toucan can survive out there. I bet a toucan can too survive out there. Just wait till she puts you in a cage. Why would she want to put me in a cage? She's obsessed with summer and sunshine. You're from Florida, so you're like the most summery, sunshiny creature she's ever seen. Trust me, you gotta get out of here. Okay, well, how about this? You show me the door, and I'll smuggle you out with me. Deal! So Gerda followed the toucan through the eternal summer paradise, past all the palm trees and coconuts. Here it is! Let's bust out! Do you have a coat? Do I have a coat? I'm a bird! What do you think? So sassy. I have an idea! Fly in here! And where do you think you're going? I'm just gonna find my friend Kay. Kay? <laughs> but it's much too cold out here. Come back inside. Don't listen to her. Excuse me? I didn't say anything. Psst, let me out. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. Now! Run! Heard a ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, but the thing about Alaska is... Ice! You're pretty clumsy, huh? Well, I'm not used to all this ice and snow. Brr, neither am I. It's freezing out here. Oh, I know, but I have to save my friend Kay. He was taken by the Snow Queen. Oof, she's the evilest queen ever. Yeah, I heard she's mega scary. Oh, poor Kay. See, doesn't he look nice? He's probably so cold and afraid. big idea. How peculiar. Stop it. Are you trying to tell me something? Can you speak? Un poquito. Hmm. Is that Spanish? Took a little bit of Spanish in school. Hola. Mi nombre es Gerda. Hola, Erda. Mi nombre es Pete. <laughs> nice to meet you, Pete. Unfortunately, I don't know more Spanish than that. Do you two can? No, but I speak fluent bird. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> Pete here tells me there's a princess who lives nearby who just married a prince. Sounds nice, but I'm not really in the mood for a love story right now. He says the prince looks just like your friend Kay. Really? Married? Kay? Kay? And he's a prince? Whoa, just like my dream. We have to go to that palace right now. Huh? Ready for liftoff? Cool. Oh, um, is this safe? We're birds. We do this all the time. Relax. Gerda tried to relax, which was hard because, you know, she was being carried over a snowy mountain by a bunch of birds. But once she was brave enough to open her eyes, she saw that it was really quite beautiful. Wow. <laughs> right? We birds got a pretty decent view. There it is. I 
see the palace. Oh, I really hope Kay's in there. <sighs> oh, <laughs> gracias, Pete. <laughs> Other birds, thank you all. <laughs> I'm forever indebted to you. <coughs> well, here goes nothing. Much better in here. Nice and toasty. Hello? Kay, princess, hello? I'm the princess. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hopsworth. <laughs> I'm looking for my friend. I think you may have married him. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. He'll be so happy to see you. Come, sit by the fire and warm up. Where is he? Darling, come down. There are some friends here to see you. Kay, is that you? My name is Kevin, but I suppose you could call me Kay. Oh, he's not Kay. I'm sorry, dear. Weird. Not as sorry as I am. Are you all right? I'm cold. I'm hungry. I'm sad. I'm scared. And I'm lost. <laughs> Maybe we can help. The prince and princess invited Gerda to spend the night. And I don't know if you've ever spent a night in a palace, but it was pretty nice. There was delicious food. <laughs> Big warm beds near cozy warm fireplaces. And for their journey, plenty of food, lanterns, and a compass. Good luck. Gerda, Toucan, and the reindeer had traveled all day through snow and ice. We've been walking forever. Doesn't this thing go any faster? Why don't you fly? <laughs> My wings got tired. Hey, reindeer, can you talk? Hello? Hmm? Oh, yes. But my name isn't Reindeer, it's Clyde. Oh, hi Clyde. Pleased to be officially introduced. <laughs> Clyde, are you sure we're going the right way? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, at least I think I'm sure. You think you're sure? He spent the last couple years in captivity. When Gerda and her friends stepped out of the woods, they stopped stunned. The palace was huge and sparkly, as if it were covered in a million diamonds. Trees were covered in shimmering icicles, and ice sculptures of animals dotted the land for as far as the eye could see. These are amazing. They look so real. Told you this place was pretty. It is. But we have work to do, people. Or, uh, animals. <laughs> Let's go find Kay. Kay? Hello? Are you there? Kay? Kay? And suddenly, there he was in the distance. Kay in the flesh. Kay, it's really you. This doesn't look right. Hey, what is he doing? Kay, it's me, Gerda, your best friend. Stop it! Why is your friend trying to shoot us with frozen arrows? Yeah, that's not very friendly. Guys, that's not Kay. I mean, it is, but he's not himself. He must be under the Snow Queen's spell or something. We have to save him. Wait, I think I might know how to break the spell. You do? There's an old story about the Snow Queen that I heard as a youngster. Yeah? And I don't know if it's true or just one of those myths. Yeah? But legend has it that to break the Snow Queen's spell over someone... Spit it out, Clyde! You have to give them a kiss. A kiss? No way! Not you, Toucan. Gerda. Oh, right. Problem. Kay is um trying to shoot me with arrows, so how would I get close enough to even give him a kiss? I think we'll just have to run as fast as we can and dodge the arrows. We... Gerda helped both of us to freedom. We owe her. Yeah, you're right. We got you, Gerda. Thanks. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. Hello. Snow Queen. Oh, no. That's right, kids. The Snow Queen. The Snow Queen was beautiful. In fact, she looked just like Gerda had dreamed, shimmering from head to toe. She certainly didn't look evil. You're the most sparkly lady I ever saw. Thank you. May I give you a little kiss? The Snow Queen leaned in and was just about to give Toucan a little peck on the head when Gerda remembered her dream. No, Toucan, that's how she freezes you. Oh, did I do that? Silly me. <gasps> Wait, are all these ice sculptures real animals? Of course. Aren't they lovely? You are evil and I know you took my friend Kay, but we're here to save him. Save him? But Kay loves it here. Impossible. You're an evil queen, and you brainwashed him. I'll show you. Kay, come here. Yes, my queen. 
Kay, would you tell this girl that you're happy here? Kay, no! You like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me, don't you remember? I'm very happy here. See, he's the Snow Prince. And you can be the Snow Princess if you like. No way! Then you can be my prisoner. Hey! Gerda! You want some too, reindeer? It's Clyde. Come on, Snow Prince. Let's go. Well, I guess being free for a day was pretty cool. Don't talk like that, Clyde. We're gonna bust out. You'll be free again. We'll save the toucan and I'll rescue Kay. You'll see. But how, Gerda? Did I mention I was a Girl Scout? I don't even know what that means. It means that I can save us. Oh, cool. Wait, I don't get it. What does that do? Conjure up some kind of magic? Pretty much. Good thinking. Fire melts ice. It's kind of like magic. Let's go. Safety first. Gerda and Clyde found Kay alone, shivering and looking miserable. He was almost blue from the cold. Kay? Do the kiss thing. Don't rush me. This is a big step in our relationship. How's my breath? <gasps> You're just saving his life, remember? Not getting married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gerda? Kay! Oh, you're back! What happened? You were captured by the evil Snow Queen. She froze your heart, but I saved you. Really? How? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> you got a little something on your face there. yoo -hoo. Snow Prince. Where are you? Ah, Snow Queen, let's go. Wait, we gotta get Toucan. Run! What happened? You got frozen, but don't worry, we're going home. Florida, baby. Woohoo! Wait, did you save me with a kiss too? Don't worry about it. Ooh, Kay and Gerda sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Hush up, Toucan. We gotta go save the rest of these animals. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can go. Guys, hop on. One, two, three, blast off. Whoa, you're doing it, Clyde. You're flying. How about that? I am. I knew you could. Good timing, by the way. Woohoo! Snow Prince, where are you going? Get back here. No way. Yeah, see you never. Kay and Gerda were so happy to be home again, back in warm, sunny Florida, far, far away from the frozen land of the evil Snow Queen. Clyde stayed for a quick visit, swam in the ocean, had some ice cream, but he got homesick and returned to the north. Toucan, on the other hand, was right at home. So, what do you guys want to do next? Build a sand castle? Go to Disney World? Go windsurfing? Maybe some alligator wrestling? The end. Aw, oh, what a happy ending! Gerda and Kay made it back to the magical land of Florida, where they'd never have to worry about snow again. Man, I wish I was on a beach right now, too. Story time.